Well, there it is, Witty Warcraft here. Welcome to a Warcraft Free Reforged guide on how to beat an easy computer. This guide is aimed at newer returning players and will also help guide you on how to play Warcraft Free Reforged in general. This will include options, micro, macro, you name it, how to assign hotkeys. I'm going to cover all of this. So, in the bottom right here, we're going to go over the options. This is where you will find video, sound, input. Now, changing this will allow you to change key bindings. I'm going to keep it on classic for now. And there's gameplay. Now, have this as I do always show unit life bars this is very important you always want to see what your units health are and use special hero status bars this is going to show your manner of the characters and show hero level this is going to show the hero level so that you know when to pick a new ability show numbers for cooldowns this is going to show you when the ability is available to use again and also tick on automatically save replays this will save replays from melee or custom games so that you can watch them back in the replay section and learn from them at the bottom left here we have toggle in between classic or reforged graphics we're going to keep it on reforged for now so let's start with the collection this is where you will choose the skin for your characters that will be in the game so for all for farseer and this is where you can change the portrait that's at the bottom right you can unlock more portraits from playing through the campaign or various aspects of beating other players so if you did want to beat other players which you're not going to do just yet are you no you're not because we're going to beat the easy computer first but if you did want to play versus other players this is how you do it you click on the versus button and you choose your race between human orc undead night elf or random and there's 1v1 2v2 3v3 4v4 free for all and you choose the maps that you wish to play on or don't play on in this case because it's turned off for death rose so you're not going to do that yet because you're definitely going to beat the computer and you're going to do that by watching this guy because I guarantee you I can get you through this and this is the best way to learn. So we'll click on replay. This is where you would watch your replay, study what it is that you did, what your opponent did and just essentially approve from that aspect. There is campaign here. It's not available because this is recorded the day before Reforge is announced or released. So that way I can get this video out there for you guys to learn and play from. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to play Orc versus Human with Tauren Chieftain, Headhunters and Shaman. A very easy build, very good versus computer. I wouldn't necessarily suggest it versus players, but versus computer, I can get you to be easy computer, normal computer or insane computer with this build. But we're going to start off with easy computer. So how do we play versus easy computer? Well, that's a good question. Custom games. Click on it. Click on create. Here you put in the game name, doesn't matter what it is, you can either make it public for other people to join, but I suggest you don't since this is between you and me, or you and you, or you and your friend. So click on this button, make it private. If your friend wants to join, he can also do so by just typing in that exact same game name in the custom game list. So this is the screen you're going to see, double click on Frozen Throne, click on Echo Isles. I'm just going to go over the options here, but you're not going to tick any of these. This is for random races or a random hero. You can actually include referees, so that's a player that will be observing but able to type, or you can just have an observer. They won't be able to type, but they can still watch you play. So if you had a friend that wanted to watch you beat an easy computer, you can do that. I know I'm talking really fast here, but I know there's a lot to cover, so that's why I'm doing it. I do apologize if it's too fast for you. Visibility, this allows you to see the map. We don't want any of that ticked. Here's the gameplay speed. You can play on slow and normal if you wish, but we're going to be playing on fast because I wish to challenge you and you're going to get better because you're going to learn from those challenges. If you challenge yourself, you will improve. That's the best way to do it. And we're starting with Easy Computer and we're going to work our way up from there. So Echo Isles, create. So this will create the game. You go into a lobby and you'll be able to select yourself, what race you are, what opponent you are. If it bugs out like it just has done now, just click on back and then create again. I do greatly appreciate you bugging out there. And then, uh, wow, it's really challenging me now. <laughs> We're learning together. Let's go back to Custom Games, create, and work out why this isn't working. Please give your lobby a name. Ah, okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, right. Man, I sound like I've done a whole bunch of cocaine. I promise I haven't. I don't do any drugs whatsoever. It's just crazy how many times I've tried to record this. And this is going to be the one. We are team number one. And we're going to be first as team number two soon. But we're going to go over this. This is your team. This is your color. Change it if you wish. This is your name. This is your race. I am going to select Orc because that's what we're going with. And this is your health percentage. So this is the percentage health of all of your units. Keep it at 100%. Now, in order to complete and play first as a computer, you need to add them, right? So left click on open slot and add a computer. You can also invite a player to the game, but we're going to add the computer. This is going to be team two. So your team one versus team two. And you're going to change their color if you wish to make it more obvious as to where they are. But blue is, blue is fine for now. 
we're going to select the computer difficulty between easy, normal, and insane. Easy and normal are basically the same thing, not much difference there. Insane has like double the resources, so they get twice the amount of resources. Uh, so that's what makes them really challenging in that aspect, is they're going to have a lot of units to throw at you. So don't take them on unless you're comfortable enough to be easy or normal. So let's select easy and select them as human. You can play versus anything you want here, but for consistency sake, we're doing orc versus human. And that's it. We're going to go into start game. Before I start this off, I've got to explain a few things because it's going to happen very fast and I want this to be nice and comfortable for you. We're going to go into the gameplay. We're going to proceed with the build. You're going to copy it as I do. It's basically build peons, put five peons in the gold mine, and it's going to be each peon that comes out of your great hall is going to build a new building. So the first building is going to be burrow. Then it's going to be altar, then it's going to be war mill, then it's going to be barracks. So think of that. If you're not sure on anything else, it's going to be burrow, altar, war mill, barracks. And I'm going to teach you on how to assign hotkeys. So I'm going to do that part kind of now, but I'll show it in the game so that I don't have to explain sort of multiple things at the same time whilst it's all happening because it's really crazy. So how do you assign a hotkey to a unit? How do you hotkey in general, right? You hold down left control or right control. I'm going to use right control because that's what I used to do. And I am used to doing it. So if I have my great hall selected, I hold down right control and I assign it a number. You can assign it a number between 1 to 9 or even 0. So we're going to hotkey it as 9 because that's how I have it. So I'm going to hold down right control and 9. Okay. And that means every time I press 9 on my keyboard, it's going to bring up the Great Hall. And we're going to assign this to different buildings. So that's how hotkeying works. It's right control plus the number on your keyboard at the same time. When it comes to my army, they're going to be 1 is going to be my Torrent Chieftain, 2 is going to be my Headhunters, and 3 is going to be all of them selected together for the time being. Now, I think we can start the game and I can explain all of this as we go along. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So apologies, this has already been seven minutes, but this is going to be inclusive and try to cover as much as possible. So if you're new to the game, you know how to throw yourself at it. So let's click on start game and get going. Orc versus human. First thing you're going to do, right? You're going to click on that great hall and you're going to press P for peon. This is going to build a peon, okay? And you're going to assign it the hotkey nine. So that's what we're going to do, right? Click, right control, nine, P. Now select your five peons and right click them onto the gold mine. Now with this peon, you're going to right click and rally him over here. Always make sure there's a couple of peons rallied up to go. So you're always flowing with peons. Now the peon's going to come out, you're going to press B for build and O for burrow. That's going to produce the burrow. Now when this burrow is being produced, you can actually select the peon that's building it and give him an order. You can right click anywhere you want, but we're going to right click on trees. Next peon to come out. Rally over to the right hand side and B yes. and A. That's build altar. Okay. So next peon, we're going to assign him over towards the trees because we're going to be building a lumber mill or a war mill for the orcs. And that's going to be a drop off point for lumber. So B and M for mother. Next peon will be a barracks. So the barracks won't be available because you're going to be flown with peons, right? At least one extra peon. And it's going to cost 180 gold. So you're going to have to wait just a moment until you've got 180 gold. And then B yes. and B. Barracks. So there we go. Next peon to come out will be assigned to the lumber. As you can see, when the burrow was finished, the peon came straight over and came over to the lumber because you assigned him that. If you don't assign them a task by left clicking on the icon and then right clicking to wherever it is you want to go, they will stand idle. You'll need to assign them a task afterwards. So what's going to happen is, is your altar's going to finish and you're going to build a Tauren Chieftain which will be located over here. And then you're going to get yourself a burrow. This is your hero. This is the staple of your army. Very, very important that you get this. Now build a burrow because you've got 40 lumber for it. As long as your burrows are close to your great hall or where your peon workers are, that'll all be good. Now we're going to get ourselves a lumber mill. You might notice that at 17 food, we've stopped building peons. That's because that's deliberate, right? You only need 17 food for this build, and you will be able to cover most of the aspects of what technology is available. So barracks is finished. You're going to press T for headhunter. So that's a troll headhunter. That's what the T stands for. Now you're going to rally to the nearest creep camp point. 
On Echo Isles, this is your nearest creek camp point. You can see on the mini-map there are green spots, orange spots, and there's also red spots. Red spots is the difficulty. Green is easy, orange is hard, and red is really difficult. So when this burrow finishes, you're going to press T again. Okay. To grind. So, T. Now, press your Tauren Chieftain. Make sure he's selected. Hot uh, key him, so left control and one. The same we for Headhunter, here. left control and two. Highlight them both what and left control and three. Move them in and use his War Stomp ability. We're going to rally the Headhunters onto the Tauren Chieftain and continue to build them. You're going to tech when the gold is available. Anytime, I'll go over the hotkey again in a second. So we're teching and we're going to pick up the item. This is the Scroller Town Portal. Do not use this yet. This is your item that you got. You can right click on it and move it in your inventory to another spot. Always be building headhunters when the gold allows. So you've got that. We've got all of our units. I'm reassigning hotkeys. So just going to continue with the gameplay actually because I think I can still explain as we're moving. We're going to come over to the shop which is over here and produce or build and no not even that. We're going to buy a healing cell. That's the one. And get another headhunter in a second. Continue creeping and keep rallying over to your Torrent Chief. So the healing self heals you over time. If you get hit, you lose that heal. So do not get hit when you're using this item. Pick up a Tome of Agility. That's going to increase your stats. Very good. You've got a new ability with the level that you gained. So we're going to pick Endurance Aura. We're going to left click this and left click on our Torrent Chieftain to heal him up. As we move over to here, the next spot on the map. We're going to continue building headhunters, and when we can, we're going to get a burrow. Okay, so anytime you get new units, right, how do you assign them into your hotkey group? Well, you can either drag over them, or you can left click on a particular type of unit to highlight all units of that type. Or if you say, for example, had these four headhunters, you can hold down left shift and left click on this, and that's another way to do it. You just basically keep bringing them in and hotkey them. So that's hotkey two, left shift, and hotkey three. So that way Torrent Chieftain is still assigned all the appropriate hotkeys. Now, what you might want to do, let's just do it, is get the steel ranged weapons. We're currently creeping. You can see this headhunter is being hurt, so right click him away from the fight. This will stop the creeps from fighting him when he comes out of their aggro range. And you can actually heal that headhunter. I will do so in a moment when the pathing allows me to do so. Again, the same for this headhunter. Let's heal him. carry on building headhunters. Now we're going to go over to this next spot over here. This will overall get you to level 5 and then we're going to go take on the computer with basically the upgraded headhunters and the shark. So you're going to be tier 2 in a second so let's just give you a moment to do that. Make sure you tech straight away again and come over and build a spirit lodge. This is going to allow you to produce shaman. Now with your barracks select troll regeneration okay let's continue the creeping so here we have this tide camp we can use war stomp again because we're at full mana you always want to have at least one or two war stomps sort of available so don't just use them all because they're very powerful abilities and they get stronger as you level up we're now level three so we've got level two war stomp which is definitely better so what we're going to do is we're going to play it somewhat safe and come over and do this next creek camp which is closer to our base keep producing headhunters we're going to get ourselves a burrow. And when the spirit lodge is finished, we're going to upgrade the shaman and then start producing them. Okay, so if there's any questions you have, feel free to type them in the YouTube comment selection below and hopefully I will answer them for you and you can use those as a guide. If you need to pause the video, feel free to check that just in case there's anything I haven't covered correctly here whilst I'm recording this. So continue creeping. There you get certain items, they increase your attack speed. Uh, they increase your sort of like ability to do things. Uh, it's hard to say because there's so many different We're items. Complete. Coming over to the next creek camp spot over here. Now, Shaman. This is Adept Training. This is going to give them another ability called Lightning Shield. But we don't worry about that. We kind of want the Bloodlust. So this creek camp is quite nasty. Okay, one way to look at creeping, right? What's a good way to creep? Do you just have all your units clumped and then start the creep camp? Or do you assign them into a certain position so that you've got a nice conclave, a nice arc to start off with? That's what you do. So we're going to start this creep camp off now. They're going to come and fight me. This guy has an ability. And he might cast Lightning Shield, which is very nasty. 
So keep an eye out for that. If you cast that on your unit, you want to move that unit away from your other units. Here it comes. So here's Lightning Shield. That does damage to anything nearby. So don't have that near your nearby units. So you can see my Troll and Chieftain Shop is very low right now. Very low. We're going to pick up the item. Troll uh, Ring of Regeneration. Very nice. Come back over. Get ourselves some healing. We've got a replenishment potion. So that's nice. So... Tier 3 is available, so we're actually going to go straight for Master Shaman training. And with the next thing, with the barracks, we're going to go with Berserker Upgrade. This is going to make sure our Headhunters are maximum upgraded, and we're going to have Shaman coming out shortly as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to purchase a Healing Salve. We're going to use that on our hero, and maybe buy a Potion of Mana as well, because we can basically beat the computer very shortly. So you are very close, guys. This is very close to being able to beat the easy computer. You should have a decent Headhunter army, and you're just going to keep moving out with Shaman and Headhunters. And you're going to produce a bar so you can go over 50 food when you need to. Next Creek Camp. Let's get ready. Remember, are we going to start the Creek Camp like this? And then right-click into it? No, we're not. We're going to assign ourselves a nice position, a nice arc. We're going to right-click our units into a position. So this is all key to having a more efficient creep in micro position. So let's pull them in, get them all nice and close. And then we're going to go with the War Stomp. And you've got an ability here called Berserk. This causes your unit to attack 50% faster when they take 40% more damage. So make sure that you only use it on units that aren't taking damage. Right. So, more headhunters, more shaman, and with the war mill, we can start to research for a range upgrade. Upgrades are worth getting when you have a decent number of units. So, let's say about 10. We've got 10, so we're going to definitely start upgrading them so they do more and more damage and they're going to be more valuable for what they are. We're almost going to be level 4 soon. We're going to get, uh, sorry, level 5. Let's hold on to the Potion of Invulnerability. We're going to sell the Gloves of Haste. We're going to sell this. Because you can only have six inventory slots. Now, one thing to do, if you get too many units, is just assign them to a new hotkey. So now, Torrent Chieftain is one, and all of my Headhunters are two. Any more units that come out will be hotkey free. Left control, free. Same will go for any units that come out of the barracks or the... Spirit Lodge. So we're going to fight this. Now if you've got a unit that's in a bad position, you can actually press A and left click on your Tauren Chieftain or a unit with high health. That way, the creeps won't actually attack it because they'll treat it as though it's not hostile anymore because essentially he's attacking me, right? That's another way to save a unit instead of just moving it out. So that covers most of the micro and the macro aspects. So honestly, I think we're pretty much good to go. Like, I think we can beat them now. You've got a big army, you've got Shaman, yes. you're going to have Bloodlust, this is going to increase your unit attack rate, their movement speed, everything is going to be great. We're not level 5 yet, because what I was supposed to do is actually create this green camp. Obviously, mistakes were made. And we're going to get another upgrade here for our ranged units, and another burrow yes. when this guy's finished. And then just keep building units. You can actually throw in Demolishers. Oh, we've actually got a guy over here who's going to definitely get himself killed. So... Another unit that you can throw in here. Oh, let me just deal with this fight. Okay, so we're going to get in close here. You see all these units, you're going to press T, and anything that is injured, you're going to left-click it and pull it back, okay? So anything that's near the front is most likely to be injured. So be ready to pull units that are near the front. Remember, T for your ability. That's War Stomp. And you've got Headhunters at the back here that can also use B for Berserk, because they're less likely to get attacked. T again... You won't be able to do this if you're brand new to the game. Um, you're going to lose some units, but feel free to watch through this again as I'm doing it so you can get more of a grasp. Make sure that you're macroing still. That's one thing I definitely suck at is macro and producing units. I don't know if I lost any units there, but I certainly won the fight. So we're level 6. I actually got a couple of abilities throughout that fight. So you can go for level 3 Torrent Stomp. Uh, that's definitely worth it. You've got level 3 Endurance Aura or Reincarnation. Now, one thing to bear in mind is the computer might have not actually met you at that point. And I am aware of that. And I want this to be... Re uh, what's, the what's the word? Could you help me out here? What is the word I'm looking for? I want this to be representative of your experience. So, I think I lost some Shaman. I must have definitely lost... I lost Shaman. 
So the computer will focus like weak, vulnerable wow. units like Shaman. So I wasn't doing a good enough job of keeping them alive. But we got more coming. Wow. If you haven't met the computer yet, he's probably going to be standing in his base. What I would suggest you do is you get all your units in a nice sort of arc, right? A nice uh, sort of line so that you can all efficiently hit because they've got a certain amount of range. And if they're blocking each other, they're not going to be able to efficiently hit. So you would actually move your Tauren Chieftain in and aggro them. One way to aggro them is to attack a building. And then this would pull them back and they would come over to about this point here. I'm trying to think about how it might look on your screen if you haven't had the exact same experience I have. And they would probably fight you about here. This is great for you. Why? Because you've got a nice big battlefield to work with and they've got a closed in spot which closes in all of their units, makes your area of effect war stomp much more powerful. To attack, by the way, you can either right click on an opponent or you can press A and click on the ground and that will mean maybe attack move towards the nearest prioritized target. So it's going to be units or heroes and then it's going to be peasants. So peasants don't typically get attacked unless there is um, a, no units nearby. So you can aggro their main base by attacking the town hall. This is going to make the human turn his peasants into militia. They're going to come over. They're going to be very easy to kill. There is actually a really strong ability that you have. It's called um, Lightning Shield. I don't actually have the mana for it, but you actually can cast it on your Torrent Chieftain. Anything that's melee and kind of separated, and it's going to do damage to anything nearby. You saw it when we were creeping over here, and you just throw yourself into that human army with Lightning Shield, as long as he's got high health. And there you go. This was computer easy. It was obviously easy, especially as I'm quite experienced. But hopefully this was also pretty easy for you. I do apologize if this was a little chaotic, but it was actually really hard to kind of explain everything as I'm playing it without the video being too long. I could do everything in separate cases, but I figured that if you're a new player, you're just going to come to a video like this and you're going to fight versus an easy computer. I can, I can show you the build order, but I also want you to get better so you can learn how to be a stronger player and then beat the harder computers from there and that's why I wanted to show you how I hotkey how I micro how I move so hopefully some of this is rubbed off on you and if it has please make sure to thumbs up the video and show your support that way throw down a comment just let me know what you think any feedback you can apply this video for normal and also insane computer. I don't think I'm going to make another one for normal and insane because it's basically going to be the same thing I've done here. And this video has also helped to just teach you how the whole Reforge system works. So if you're new, you know how to basically go through the options and how to create your own game and operate from there. So good job. I really hope this did work for you. If you followed through as I do things, then it should do. If not, try it again, but remember with the build order. Okay. Great Hall, select Build Peon, put five Peons into Gold Mine, and then it's Borrow, Alter, War Mill, Barracks. And then you can get a Foodie Lounge and Tech up from there. You just basically mass in Headhunters and Shaman. You don't actually even need the Shaman to do this. Another unit that you may wish to get. Excuse me, I've been talking so much, my throat. Something is, doing? you can build a bestiary, okay? And this will allow you to produce a unit called a Kodo. A Kodo provides an aura that increases damage to nearby units, which can be upgraded. So, that's another thing that you can throw in. It's a very strong combination. You've got a lot of damage with this kind of build. So you've got Shaman for the Bloodlust. Here's Lightning Shield, it's L. And this will do damage to anything nearby. So you can already see he's doing massive damage with just one spell. Just because he's stood so close to so many units. Trolls are really effective units for new players because they're cheap, they're cheerful, they do lots of damage if you upgrade them. So they're free nil at the moment. So that's maximum damage and very little on the armor upgrades. You can upgrade armor. You see we've got a an abundance of resources at this point. No need to worry about it. And they've got health regeneration, which will help you to micro and keep them alive. And they've got Berserk, which increases their damage, and it's fun to do. It also increases how much damage they take. Ah! I can't save you, can I? You can see what I was doing is I'm making him attack his own units temporarily. Just so that 
the units would stop attacking him. So you can save units that look like they're almost guaranteed for death. But if you do lose a unit or two, don't fret about it. You'll learn, you'll get better. It's not really a big deal. It really isn't. It's a macro game as well as a micro game. So making sure that you've got an efficient economy to produce more units for any that you lose is also just as important. So if you do need to concentrate more on just building the units in the first place, then please do that. I've always been really obsessed with micro aspect of things. So that's come at the cost of macro. My macro does suffer. Macro is basically building base or you know, doing multiple things on the maps at the same time. As you can see, I've got units over here that are idle. So, and hotkey and buildings and all this kind of stuff. It's just making sure that the game is flowing outside of the initial combat that is currently taking place. I get obsessed with the combat aspect at the detriment of macro. So, you might find you're stronger at micro or stronger at macro, or if you're gifted, great at both. Congratulations, you did it. But um, either way, you can make either one work for you. Both are very important in this game, so you can't really go too far wrong. The computer will be defeated, and we will have beaten the computer easy. And again, this applies for normal or insane. You can use this build order, and you will beat the computer. Just make sure that if you're not comfortable having a fight with a computer, you don't have to have it, right? Pull your units back. The computer is very unlikely to chase you all the way across the map. They're more likely to return to their original position. So if you're not comfortable with a fight, just move back, build up more units, get yourself healed up, get yourself mana, and go back into it. You can manipulate the computer a lot with their range. So this wow. is one other thing I want to show off, okay? One way, easy way to fight the computer <laughs> is to basically not do it at close range, but at actually at far range. I didn't mean to do that because I thought it was nighttime for a second. The, the game is so darn dark. <laughs> wait, wait, don't, no, don't, don't hold that against me. Okay, here we go. I was just trying to demonstrate, okay? So here's night time. This is what I meant to do. Here we go. So you can either start the fight with four trolls really close like this, but you don't want to do that, do you? Because you're going to take tons of damage and probably lose. If you make your trolls move to about three quarters of the screen away from where the creeps are positioned, you can creep them actually a lot more efficiently. You might want more than four trolls, but for now we've got four trolls just to demonstrate this. So, how do you start this creep camp off? Well, you do it with maximum range, and the best way to do that is with a unit that has a lot of range. Headhunter is your best unit with range currently. So you're going to right click, and as soon as he starts throwing that spear, you're going to pull him back. Pull him back to where your other trolls are, because the creeps will chase you to a certain distance, and then they'll run back to their leash point. So right click, pull back. What this will do is this will force the creeps to come over to you. And if they're not happy with the fight, they might actually run back to their original spot, as you can see. And this makes it really easy for you to get lots of free hits. Because they're running away from you whilst you're doing damage to them. So this is how you creep the majority of camps in Warcraft 3. Particularly versus other players. Because the other benefit of doing this is if the computer comes and ganks you. Gank is a phrase that is used for when someone is attacking you whilst you're busy doing something. If you're over here, you're stuck between the, computer, uh, the NPCs and the computer player. Or the other player. If you're over here... You can just run away because there's no one over here. That's the beauty. So what I want you to do yeah. is use this video <laughs> and take any of the advice I've given you and just try to go with it and Who you want practice it. Just practice it. The micro, the hotkey assignments. So I'll just quickly go over the hotkey Done. again. Number one, you might have your hero as F1 or F2 for if your second hero. I personally prefer to have them on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and all this kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is hotkey 1 for Torrin Chieftain. We're going to left control click. So left control and left click on the headhunters. That's going to select up to 12. We're going to right click them over here. And we're going to hold down left control and 2. So 1 for Torrin Chieftain, 2 for these headhunters. Now we're going to drag over these headhunters. And then we're going to hold down left shift and left control and left click. That's going to highlight the remaining shaman. Now we're going to hold down left uh, control and free. 
So we've got one for Torrent Chieftain, two for these headhunters, and three for our remaining headhunters along with our casters. If you wish to have Bloodlust and Autocast, right click it, that will turn it on and off. I highly suggest you have it on Autocast for the time being. And that's how I assign things. You might say, oh, okay, so you've got this really injured unit here. How do I get rid of him? Because I don't want him want continuing in the fight. What I would do is I would select the group that he belongs to. I would right click him back to a safe point. Let's just say it's safe to send him to the base. We're going to right click there and we're going to hold down left shift and left click on the icon of the injured unit or you can left click on him. And then we're going to hold down left control and two. What that does is that's the hotkey group two, but now it's removed him from it. So every time I do that, do? I now highlight all of my healthy units. So that's how I kind of do a lot of micro as well, is I'll constantly be recreating my own groups. I don't know if it's really that efficient. It's just how I learned to play the game, and it's how I'm stuck with it. If there's a better way, feel free to help each other in the comments section and maybe try that out for yourselves. I don't want to hinder you with... The clunkiness of necessarily how I do it, that is just how I do it, and perhaps it does help you. So I'm constantly moving injured units Understood. in and out. As you can see right there, I just remove those two units. And every time I press 2, I've got that what hockey group. Every time I press 3, I've got this. These, these two are no longer a part of it, because I'm just used to doing it. It's muscle memory at this point. So if you do it enough times, it's fine. Plan. So... I can't think of anything else that I need to sort of help you with because I think we've gone over everything. This guide helps you on how to basically play and beat the computer. In this case, the easy computer, but of course you can use this guide to operate versus the normal computer and the insane computer as well. And it also helps you on how to create custom games. So if you wanted to create an actual custom game that you played online, you go to download. And this will be anything that you downloaded. So you can host that and play that with your friends. That's another thing. Otherwise, that's Warcraft Reforged as far as I understand it. So thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for bearing with me. I've actually spent over an hour at least trying to record this beforehand. Because I wanted to make it as comprehensive as I possibly could. But as short as I possibly could. Whilst getting as much information as I possibly could. So apologies for the really fast talking. But I, that was the only way I could do it. Otherwise this would be like an hour long. Thank you again so much. Have a really good day. Check out my other videos on the channel. I stream at twitch.tv slash witty and you can also help support patreon.com slash witty warcraft. And there's also Twitter where you can contact me or witty warcraft at gmail. So witty warcraft on Twitter or witty warcraft at gmail. Thank you guys so much. I really hope you enjoy Reforged. Like I say, I'm currently going to be playing through the campaign. So if you're interested in that, I will be uploading the campaign into sort of long video sections but it's going to be in chunks so it's going to be the reign of chaos campaign it's going to be the prologue that's going to be its own video it's going to be the human campaign of reign of chaos that's going to be its own video and the same for the undead orc and the night elf and so forth going into the frozen throne and then the bo bonus uh, campaign which i'm really looking forward to the founder of durata i've had a blast actually recording this i don't think my voice has but i have so again I really hope that you get something from this video and I really hope that it helps you to become a stronger player because I've been playing Warcraft 3 for 16 years, probably more, I don't even know, as many as there can possibly be because I've been playing it since the game came out. I haven't stopped playing it because I learnt this game, how to micro, how to hotkey, I learnt that stuff early on and it really helped me to commit and really enjoy still playing this game to this day because I learnt those things early on. So if you really you know get that stuff down you will enjoy the game so much more when it's so much more comfortable to play with the hotkeys that goes for the buildings so the units t for headhunter s for shot all this kind of stuff p for peon you know you just all of it will flow i guarantee it if you practice and you just you just keep doing it you will get better you'll bring down that easy computer you'll bring down that normal computer you'll bring down that insane computer and then you can move into the multiplayer and perhaps bring down other players themselves and enjoy the game the way it was meant to be played thank you so much again have a great day this is witty warcraft signing off take care